Out here in the ocean, you better be prepared. Secure anchoring is the key to your safety. Mantis Anchor is the sailor's choice. Hello over users, Alex here with your guide and this is the first tutorial of 2020. We're going to open it strong with this amazing walkthrough, this professional project where I did with Phoenix, 3ds Max, Maya, Nuke, Photoshop and After Effects and actually Premiere Pro to assemble the whole thing. So stay tuned, we're gonna go through this entire project really quickly in order to give you some cool insights and I'm gonna show you what I did. Okay, so this is the first uh, simulation here of the first shot that I did as you can see here it starts uh, very calm and then starts to gather those waves slowly and uh, I did this camera move that actually flies above that's a trick uh, that I did in order to hide the trail the ship supposed to have a long trail uh, behind it and um, when you're getting a straight angle, like looking straight at the boat uh, from the beginning, you don't really see that trail. It kind of starts a little bit earlier. But when you get closer to the boat, this is when you start seeing uh, the trail. So I had to tilt it up and uh, uh, that's the frame. So when we start like this, I don't really see the trail because it's kind of behind the boat. But when I'm moving forward, with the boat this is where the trail starts to appear okay so i have another cool thing uh on the boat if you guys notice here all right so i have some 3d people that i downloaded from um render people they have let me just hide that simulation here so it will go a little bit faster uh it's hard with recording and everything overloads of the system so as you can see here, I have um, two uh, characters that I've downloaded from renderpeople.com. Those are completely free for use and uh, I also animated them. Now they come with the biped right here. If we go and we can see this is the biped for the man and we have also a biped for the woman. Where is that? I just saw it here, right here. That's a woman biped. So in order to work with this, I had to split my screen in two. And uh, I also placed camera here for those guys. And uh, basically the scenario goes like this. So the guy goes on the boat, kind of goes on the boat. He looks, this is how it starts. He looks, then he goes on the boat. Now here, the arm goes through the wheel. I don't see that. This is when I'm flying with the camera. So I don't animate stuff that I don't see in a camera. Now here he grabs back the wheel and you can see that the ship is tilting and he's going to the side and then she's like, oh look, there's something there. And, and he, he turns to her to get the reaction. He's like, what? She's like, yeah, yeah, look there. And then she covers um, her forehead with the arm just to uh, block the sun. And he turns his head as where he goes, and then he turns. So a little scenario going on here with those characters. Those are completely for free, and it's really fun to animate them. So uh, just put it into two screens, and then you can put uh, auto keys, and then you know st start animating those characters. Okay, you can see here that uh, it's all well connected and um, you can build your scenarios like that okay now uh, i also if we open my materials here i've tried to use different backgrounds as far as the lighting goes i used hgri map uh, this one in order to do the lighting i also tried different other ones uh, to do it i also did a bunch of tests uh, for executing and seeing how the simulation goes so that's very essential that you guys do 
this preview you can export it from here tools preview create preview animation and then with the standard preview preset you can export that movie and see how the stuff works okay so i did a couple of them just to see um how this how the sailing how the waves are breaking okay now i also if you notice let's go to the sequence here i also have two islands here at the back as you can see and i'm kind of blurring the the background you can see the quality is pretty good on those 1080p so um those islands actually not actual islands this is just uh displacement with with those guys so we can see turbo smooth and if we pick up the texture it's uh it's a big displacement with a high res all right so this is the first shot i also have here um, basic simulations you know particle shader for the foam and um, for the splashes and the water so we're gonna go uh, in detail how to do it i actually did this one with uh, meters even though i already did tutorial one i think it was in millimeters this one is actually set up to meters so i'm gonna do a detailed tutorial on this subject um, and if you have any questions to know you know how to animate the characters or anything else that you're gonna see here and you want to explore in the detailed tutorial you're just more than welcome to write it down and uh, give me a hand okay now let's open another scene with the dropping anchor so um just before i'm opening the second scene i want to show you the rendering parameters here so we're rendering 1080p and i'm saving here open xr and of course with those all those render elements and i calculated z depth here 5000 i just measured the length and i put the number how far i want to have my z depth to work so later on i can use it in post-production now the rest of the settings is pretty straightforward i'm using just brute force to render this that's why it's rendered so fast uh, in a day i mean overnight and um, one and nine my quality and here everything basically by default global dmc so you can see it's not uh crazy high parameters but it's pretty clean so 0.005 we're gonna give you pretty clean results and i'm also uh using um denoiser to kind of polish it up but again as you can see here this is a sequence active segment from 0 to 312 frames and um, I'm just using brute force in order to render that sequence with no pre-calculation with no radiance map no light cache just pure brute force okay now let's open another one um, dropping anchor that's the second shot that I've done here um, this simulation actually was pretty fast I'm also going to do a tutorial how to do those splashes it's a little bit uh, different approach but you can see I'm just what I'm having here is just a big box and uh, it's deep enough to drop to drop the anchor in and it's pretty cool like it's going down with all this stuff so I thought actually to do maybe a camera from the like from the bottom something like this going up you know all those splashes could be really really cool can see that beautiful trail that's been created from the dive in all right so again uh, detailed tutorial gonna come up on that uh, same lighting here with uh, I got a little bit very Sun and I got the same HDRI map and the simulation got also two particle systems uh, one for shader and uh, one for splashes or foam all right now the camera was animated manually here i kind of gave it a little bit of uh, of kind of move 
up and down and the ship is and the boat is going up and down the wave so I kind of created that illusion of uh, wavy wavy surface so we're kind of standing on a wavy surface and uh, I think it came out not bad that shot now let's go and uh, open the third shot which was made in Maya this was a uh, decision that I took because Maya got really good uh, splines and the graph editor so I can really do solid uh, polished animation in order to uh, execute. I try to do some stuff with uh, Max and it was hard to get to rig the chain properly and to animate it properly so I've decided to use Maya for that purpose you know um, Maya is really basically made for animation so uh, here I'm using dynamic particle system in order to uh, start creating it. I actually need to just play blast this whole thing. And uh, that's what I'm gonna do. Let me just show you uh, how this stuff works. So um, the particles here, they've been created uh, in real time, which speeds up tremendously in the animation process. I don't need to pre-calculate it uh, pre-simulated like uh, in Phoenix um, I'm just using some forces some turbulence and I'm using a box here let me show you I'm using let's see dynamic here we go this is the box you can see the boxes here and it's creating those particles so every time I get uh, connection points, uh, like a collision between metal and the sand. I'm going to throw in more particles in order to cover it up. So basically this is um, the simulation of the anchor going into the sand. And you can see it simulates pretty fast because uh, it's running um, real time, you know, and uh, it sucks too because I have to recalculate it every time uh, I do a little change but it's uh, it's still pretty fast I don't have to wait you know 20 minutes for simulation to finish so that was a pretty cool idea now here I'm using also uh, animated plants animated grass that actually built in to the Maya package and I rigged let me show you the joints here so I rigged my anchor with, uh, it's not showing the joints. Yeah, here we go. So you can see the, the joint. So for every um, ring here, I made a joint and all of the joints connected. So they have this uh, hierarchy and it's really easy to animate because the tip of that joint where it starts it starts right here where the eight over the anchor connected to the chain and from here uh, i can twist it up and down put it in any any way and it will follow my uh, starting point so it was pretty easy to uh, animate because what i did is just linked that point to the anchor i have animated the anchor and then um, that chain was following everywhere anchor was going so uh, it's a pretty cool uh, stuff here so if we go to view perspective f we can see that scene here we can see those joints so you can see it's all connected so if i'm moving one with this hierarchy everything is going to be here animated following along now I did a lot of tricks here so basically I'm using a bunch of lights you can see so one light is creating those shapes on the floor um, the caustics I'm re-simulating the caustics so one light is throwing it um, and just I'm rotating them now how I did the caustics let me, sh let me just close this one fog box and take that light and see 
here we go so in here I have that uh, sequence of of caustics caustic pattern so you can see it's all uh, animated sequence that I baked into the light and I'm just projecting it on the floor so that was a cool trick now I'm also using a bunch of lights just to do particular illuminations so I'm illuminating with one light from below surface so shining through the surface and it's illuminating the anchor and I have a bunch of other um, lights here throwing light on uh, the surface and another light is just throwing uh, soft light kind of simulating uh, GI global illumination for that scene so I broke it down and I put basically each light for every object and in order to have full control over that uh, scene and uh, it came out to be pretty fast on render I mean 10 minutes uh, per image which was uh, pretty good I was satisfied I couldn't get it below 25 minutes uh, per render in 3ds max so that's basically the reason why I said okay let me try Maya and in Maya everything worked, worked really uh, fast and really fine and even the simulation here with the sand and everything um, that stuff is just you know working great it's been created uh, real time and I can see how the stuff works right away I don't have to wait so a lot of fast uh, input and feedback uh, from Maya the workflow here was a little bit faster Okay, and for the specs, I used uh, particles. So basically, I got just the camera move from the previous shot. I brought it here, and I created that uh, particle system here, a box. You can see the camera from the previous scene. And I'm just moving inside those particles right here. And then later on, I rendered it as a JPEG on the black uh, background, and I was able to add it in post to my sequence. I also have bubbles that I also did it separately from that scene. So, and you can see the bubbles coming out. Also a uh, particle system with a couple of scripting. I cached those particles. Even though they were dynamic, now they are uh, static because I can move them anywhere and they will uh, produce animation, which is pretty cool. All right, so again, this one I rendered on the black background and I was able to merge it into my scene. So the reason to dividing that is to have full control over my bubbles and the particle specs underwater. I just didn't know how they're going to affect my scene. So I wanted to have clean render and uh, full control over additions. All right, now uh, let's close this one and move to the next scene which was the clouds so this is the cloud scene i fixed the chain in order to have that nice stretch at the end of the shot and uh, you can see i'm using dynamic uh, clouds here i mean they are static but the objects are uh, volume grid so um that considered to be dynamic object uh, that can be manipulated we can change it uh, change the thickness, change the color. So I've played around with parameters and there is a tutorial that actually shows how to use those. So you can go uh, back to my YouTube channel and check out this if you missed it. Now here everything also was animated uh, manually. I have a couple of lights here that's flashing for just a couple of seconds, you know, up and down to simulate the lighting effect. And what else I've got here? So those are the clouds. I basically build them um, for the camera perspective. So everything camera sees, that's how it's uh, working. Okay, and I also have another dynamic cloud here, which I'm going to show you uh, in tutorial. Uh, and then everything is pretty much basic. Um, dome light. And... Uh, I didn't use Phoenix here for the water, I just used some plane for the water. But I used some customized HDRI map for this purpose here. And this is the map that I actually used for the final shot. So I'm going to show you now how I created the HDRI map. 
I actually made it manually because I needed to combine the water from the previous one and the clouds from the new HDRI that I found. And that's, uh, let's see, I think this is this one. So it's very easy to manipulate. You can just open two HDRIs. They're supposed to have the same uh, depth. If one HDRI tends to be darker, you can just light it up with exposure. So that's what I do. I put exposure here. And if we go to exposure, I can just tone it down in order to see what's going on in my HDRI. So that's basically the image that I uh, built. I also use the stamp cloning tool in order to fix the background here a little bit. You can see it used to be city here, but uh, I cloned it and that's eventually uh, the clean background with the horizon line, clean horizon line and some water here. That's the HDRI that I created. So after you've done, you can just delete this, merge your map and save it. I'm not gonna save this, but you can save it, load it, and then you will have your custom HDRI map for, um, for lighting. All right, so in this one, before we go to the next, I just wanted to show you because a lot of stuff is dynamic here and everything. I've used uh, V-Ray GPU to render. So basically I used my graphic card to render. Um, the only thing that I noticed, it rendered fast, but my computer got so overheated because of the graphic card was just, you know, working full power. It was very noisy at night and it got really, really hot. So I had to cool down. I put my computer close to uh, air conditioning in order to uh, cool it down a little bit, you know. But besides that, everything worked uh, pretty fast, pretty cool. Uh, overnight render, 100 frames um, with the light cache, which was very surprisingly to me. I never used, I used light cache, light cache method to do, um, you know, interior fly throughs, flicker free. But this one was uh, for moving objects. And uh, it's kind of surprising to see how the whole thing uh, turned out to be. Okay, so um, everything by default, nothing, nothing much here. And those are my rendering parameters. I limited to eight minutes. So basically render in eight minutes and then two minutes it was using to denoise the whole thing. Denoiser worked here really good. I'm gonna show you the before and after how the grainy, the, um, the raw result is and denoiser was just cleaning the whole thing up pretty, pretty well. All right, now let's open our final scene, Ocean Storm. And in this one, the first 140 frames of simulation I deleted because it was just too heavy. And the whole thing kind of started from here. And I only needed to render it from 140 to 400. That's what I rendered. So I didn't keep the first 140 frames. This was about 50 gigs of memory. And the whole thing would be like uh, maybe close to 100 gigs. So I said, uh, yeah, I better, I better delete those and save some RAM because I don't really need to render them. You know, I did export my uh, previous, the animatic for that shot. And I saw that nothing happening, nothing much happening till frame 100. And after 100 to 140, it kind of starts to, to build waves. Um, but the whole thing kicks in in 140, okay? So in this one, I used the new Phoenix FD4 uh, update and it had active bodies in it. So if we go up here, you can see I'm using some wind in order to lean my ship to the side. And I'm using here active bodies with uh, two boxes here. One box is right here just to create that, that little wave and uh, another box is this ship, it's called Box 41, right here. If I open it, yeah, you can see this is Box 41 Phoenix clone. So what it does, it actually clones the object, the real object is right here. That's my uh, Box 41. But uh, Phoenix, it clones uh, your object and then it simulates it and your object has just been hidden there and um, it's not being rendered at all. Alright, so in that uh, boat here, if I click 
Phoenix properties, we can see that um, we have a bunch of cool new stuff here that's been added. That's for the active bodies. And we can choose a preset, cork, ship hull, wood. So all of those probably will sink. I tried, I tried them, they were like sinking my ship. Um, but something that would work really good with the wind and the waves uh, was cork. Uh, even though ship hull was a little bit too heavy on the waves. I know it may look a little bit too light, kind of bouncing. But um, it's just something that I had to go with. Uh, so uh, the density is 270 you know kilograms divided by m third whatever it is um that made my ship i did a couple of bunch of the tests that made my ship really uh, follow the waves now the cool thing here is 0 .0, uh, 0.05 original animation influence i had some animation when i'm leaning the ship so there is a little bit influence of my original animation uh, in that shot, in that mix. Now for the rendering here, I used also uh, CPU 116, pretty high, but very low on the noise threshold. And I didn't do any GI in this uh, scene because I used uh, fake GI with a little light here that I kind of simulated the global illumination. So uh, it kind of gave me nice results. Let me hide this Phoenix simulation. So we'll have a little bit faster. So here we go. This is the ambient inclusion that I used to fake ambient uh, AO with uh, dirt map. Okay, so that's another trick. And also you can see I'm using rain here, rain particles. Uh, they didn't brought much. I tried to do splashes with the water. Um, I could do a really detailed shot, but I couldn't do this massive shot with the rain. So the rain and the wind and all that stuff was added in After Effects. All right. And uh, now it's time to show you how I assembled this. And uh, I brought everything together into one movie file. Okay. So let's do some post-production. I'm going to open my Nuke. And let's take it to there. Oh, before we open the Nuke, last thing. I did some cool stuff on this chain. Actually, this chain is made with script. And what's cool about it is that it's all connected to that wire. So it's aligning it on the wire. And uh, let's just select that wire here. So it's dynamically building that chain. So everywhere the chain goes, this whole thing rearranges so actually it's working like a real chain okay which is pretty cool so it's all programming right here um, that I uh, that I put some script on the animation and I set those to be attached and follow path so I might do a tutorial if you guys are interested I might do a tutorial how I did this chain you know but the cool thing about it is that I can take that point and I can connect it to the nose of the ship and everywhere the ship goes, the, the chain will follow and uh, the end of the chain will stay in place. So this is what I was looking for. I was looking to show how strong is the anchoring in the water because the, we sell safe anchors. I mean, my, my uncle does that. So um, he wanted to emphasize that it's a really strong anchoring grip for the chain in the surface. Okay. So now uh, let's uh, go into Nuke and I'll show you some, some cool stuff.